Benvenuti del Barbieri di Barber Dave, i viaggio attraverso i prodotti di rastura di Sapore Vecchio Verasino. That's all I got. Uh, welcome to Barber Dave's Barber Shop at Home. Very excited uh, as we begin our tour of all the shave products from Sapore Vecchio Verasino. Um, we're going to go through all of them. Uh, now, I will not be using EDPs uh, for all of them, only one, because I've only got one currently, Kubebe. But I'm going to be do doing just the aftershave so we can look at uh, how long the aftershaves last. Because each of the aftershaves has a little bit of a, a different as far as product. Um, plus, these videos might be a little bit longer uh, as... Um, I want to get them quick and not going through the full production, and so I probably won't be speeding them up. However, I also want to go over the notes and then answer any questions from the previous video um, that you may have. Uh, and I will also link the fragrance notes, uh, top, middle, and bottom, as well as any properties that the, um, uh, that the soap has. Uh, we will also uh, go over how to lather each of the soaps because you've got different beta formulas and those formulas have been updated over time. Uh, you've got 4.1, 4.2, and then the most recent is 4.3. So there'll be different ones in that. Plus, some of the aftershaves are uh, in different product bottles now as they've updated. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of history of how I got involved with Sapin Ficcio Verasino. Uh, so let's start off with that. Um, I've been wet shaving since I was about 14, so that would have put us in 1979, roughly. And um, I was also fortunate enough to be stationed at uh, Aviano Air Base in Northern Italy, which is very close to Brevia. And uh, I had actually used Sapin Vecchio hand soaps and never even put the two together. So when I got back into traditional shaving, uh, I was fortunate to, uh, to buy a lot of my first things through Bull Goo Shaving. And I noticed that he had a soap there called the Flying Mango. Now it, it was branded as Bulgu Shaving, but it, it, it said made by Sapota Ficciu Verasino. Now, having been stationed in Italy, Parasso was the big thing, Italian barbershops, the way they did things. And, and much of my uh, attitude towards traditional shaving and how I operate my barbershop it was very much influenced by what I saw when I was in Italy. Um, so I asked him about that, and I was going to buy some, but they, it was a special run that they only did for them. So he was nice enough, Phil was nice enough to send me a little sample, and I, I, I used it. I fell in love with it. Uh, so, of course, like any other um, acquisition disordered person, I went over and I saw that they were uh, doing this thing called 70th Anniversary. And it was the 70th anniversary of uh, Sapo Vicio Verasino. So I bought it, fell in love with it. As all you all know, um, it's just tremendous. Um, and uh, started reaching out um, and, and, and shooting my pictures. Well, uh, I became uh, acquaintances with Marco Bacati, who you see on the forum now, and Alessandro Adriani, who are the principals of, uh, of Sapato Ficcio Verasino, and they actually took over the company to bring it back to its, its former glory. And they've done a fantastic job. Now, remember, this is not a small artisan. This is a big corporate. I mean, it's big. I mean, if you look online or just go into Google Earth and type in Sapo Vecchio Verasino and look at their campus, it's huge uh, in northern Italy. Beautiful country. And, you know, you've got Florence and Milan. And, and, and I'll be the first one to admit that the romanticism of Italy grabbed me when I, when I was stationed there. And it'll always be there. In fact, there's been talks of us actually heading that way at some point. Uh, so... To live, that is. Um, so it, it's it's uh, it's always been a part. So I reached out, got the stuff, and I became uh, somewhat friends with uh, with Marco and, uh, and Alessandro due to the fact that they were using some of my pictures, my photographs on their website, which I greatly appreciated, uh, and on their social media because uh, I, I do suggest that you guys uh, go over to uh, on Facebook if you're on Facebook, uh, look at. Uh, the Sapo Ficcio Verasino uh, Aficionados group. It's a group of us crazy people that love SB that, you know, do talk about stuff. And then also their website, Sapo Ficcio Verasino. So um, I approach them and I want to make a disclaimer. I am a brand ambassador for SV. However, I do not receive any compensation whatsoever. Uh, and I actually asked them to become a brand ambassador. I love the product so much and I was promoting it as most of you know back at the other place as well as uh, here and so I said you know you guys have used my pictures you guys have done this I really want to represent your brand. I also am going to be carrying the stuff in the new shop so that's how all that happened so as I do these I am being 
as um, uh, transparent uh, and as um, non-biased as I can, but I did want to let everybody know I am a brand ambassador for them, but none of this product did I receive in lieu of a review. None of it. I paid for everything full price. So uh, so in that respect, uh, these will be as unbiased as possible. And I'm also going to to address some of the concerns people have with um, with Sapa de Ficio Veracino. And I'm sure that now that they are a uh, an artisan retailer, they will answer your questions as well. This is coming from me as the owner of the TSC, as well as just a, a, a traditional shaver. So let's talk about the big, the big elephant in the room. Many people think that SV... Um, is a little light in the sense. Well, you got to understand the European and, and especially the Italian thing of what's called Colonia. Uh, there is a base to almost everything. And the perfumers, because a lot of people say, oh, it's a vetiver. Oh, it's a, it's a chamomile. Oh, it's a lavender. But understand that, that the notes of a fragrance are like notes of a symphony. And that's what they're trying to create as a symphony, regardless of what the final name is. For instance, today, uh, we're going to be using one that uh, doesn't get a lot of play. Uh, and it's more of a winter scent, in my opinion. And that's Tundra Arctica. Uh, and we'll go over the notes and everything on that. But understand that, yes, the similarities are because a lot of the Colonia bases are the same. And you could say the same for Aqua de Parma. Uh, you could say the same for uh, any of the Italian. They've all got that, that, that similar note. But the symphony of notes that come together, and that's really when you develop your olfactory, that's what you want to do. You don't necessarily want to pick out each note because they may blend well enough that you don't. But it's the overall fragrance. Now, some people say it's light. Some people say it's heavy. That's all personal. I find them perfect. Um, some people don't. As far as soap performance, uh, we're going to go over that on the proper way to lather that. Now, I'm going to be doing face lathering, but the basis of how to lather is the same. And we'll go over that. So that's kind of a disclaimer all the way out on how we're going to do. And uh, those of you that saw the picture in the beginning of the video, that's all the SV products. So we're going to be going over each and every one, not in any specific order. Um, and go over the different properties of the 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3 beta formulas as well. So today we are going to do Tundra Arctica. Now this is a special uh, uh, ivory container that they have. It's a square box container um, that I think is just class. I mean, they're really, really neat. And that's what I've put my puck in because most of the pucks come in uh, a pet container style thing. So... Now, as far as lathering, oh, and also I should say, today we're going to be using the Vector, Blackland Vector with a uh, Feather Pro Guard blade. I'm going to be using my Sapin Facio Veracino Artisan 2.0 in ivory uh, with the High Mountain Manchurian. Now, this is exactly what the uh, brush that we're all buying is going to look like, except up here. This will be gold and it will have the Shaving Cadre logo, but the same knot. And this knot, in my opinion, is the best knot on the market, hands down going away uh it's just wonderful and as you can see it gels almost immediately so as far as lathering the soap now this is uh this is an earlier beta version the tundra arctica and also we'll be using the the tundra arctica um aftershave now if you've noticed they've changed their packaging these used to be the ones that only barbers could get and now they're packaging them that way but they're still good um so let's talk about let's talk about how to soap this is exactly one tablespoon of water. Take the tablespoon of water. I use cold water. I guess you could use warm water, but here that's kind of academic. Pour it on top. Go take your shower. Go do whatever you're doing. Soak your brush. Blah, blah, blah. And then um, when you're done, you'll see it look somewhat like this. Pour what excess is into your brush and start loading. Because this is, as hard, this is a hard soap. It's an Italian hard soap, and it's not a tallow soap. It is a vegetal soap, and it has got tons and tons of good stuff in it. And I would load usually for about 15 to 20 seconds to get it deep into the knot, and you may have to add some water. They don't recommend that you add water, but I usually do. So that's it. So that's, that's, that's the, the whole thing as far as, uh, as far as lathering is concerned. Um, and if you do it that way, I think you'll have no problem whatsoever. Now, I also suggest, because some people will, will rinse their face after each pass, some people will not. I recommend rinsing it after each pass to get that residual slickness. Because I know uh, KJ had, had said that, you know, he felt that there wasn't a lot of residual slickness. So try that as well. So before I start face laddering, let's go over the the aftershave. Now, the Tundra Arctica, you know, we've talked about skin food and all this certain stuff that's coming out right now. Well, Sabbath Vicuvio Veracino has been a 
uh, just they've been doing it forever. So, for instance, in the Tundra Arctica, you have Icelandic lichen, lichen, which soothes and purifies, and it's an antibacterial emollient. You've got aloe, which is healing. You've got calendula, which is nourishing, healing, and soothing. Chamomile, which is soothing, antibacterial, refreshing. Eucalyptus, which is a kind of a balsamic, very refreshing, also antibacterial. You have mallow, which is soothing and moisturizing. Lavender, which is an antibacterial soothing. And then vitamin E, which is an anti-inflammatory. So there's good stuff in here for your skin. All the alcohols are naturally based. So that's on the... Uh, you know, on the, on the, just the aftershave. Now the soap contains these things too. So let's go over the notes. Now, Tundra Arctica is, like I said, a winter scent in my opinion, but you can do it in the summer. Uh, but it's a, it's an oud. It, it's, it's, it's an agar wood, which that's what oud is. For those that don't know, agar wood is what oud is derived from. And so your top notes are very woody. Uh, you've got oud, cedar, and tangerine. Now, when you first smell this, that's what's going to hit you right out of the gate. You've got the, you smell the cedar, you know, those of that have the smell the cedar plank, you smell the oud in the background, which has got that pungent, almost barnyard quality because it's a pure agar wood. And then you have some brightness with the tangerine. Those are your top notes. Now that's like the opening of the symphony. Now, as you move down and as it dries down, you've got a little bit more wood, but you've also got some florals. You've got cashmere, which is the only synthetic fragrance in here. Um, and it's a very soft, vanilla, creamy type note. And you can detect that a little bit. And then you've got Damascan Rose. I don't detect that at all, but I can see where it, it blends in. And then you've got patchouli. Yes, you've got a peppery punch that you can smell. And when it dries down, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll smell that. And then at the bottom notes, you've got wood, amber, and leather base notes. So you've got an amber, which is that kind of creamy, uh, incense -y vanilla type. Then you've got sandalwood, which is that, that wonderful warming feel. And you can just detect that. But the thing I love about Sapo and Vichio Veracino scents is they do take you on a story. They do take you through. So if you're expecting to see everything at once, you're not. What you're getting, like I said in the beginning, is the oud, the cedar, and the tangerine. And then at the bottom, you have leather. And you do, you do get that. So all those meld together to, to form Tundra Arctica. Uh, Arctic, I should say. And it is a very warm scent. Uh, like I said, I would wear it more in the winter months, but I know that a lot of people have not tried it. But if you like ouds, you should like this. And also, Italian scents, for the most part, are very, very light. They're not gonna, they're not gonna knock you out of the park. And they're meant to just be skin scents. You know, um, so when people get close to you, you know, when you walk into a room, people don't want to go, holy crap, who the heck is that? Like you get with some of your other, uh, you know, your other type uh, parfums and stuff like that, which, you know, which would be like uh, Blue de Chanel. You know where everybody with Blue de Chanel is. You know where they're at within a block. Where this, you got to get close. But I did a little test last night uh, for how long the aftershave lasted. And it was a good four hours as a skin scent. Now, it, it doesn't project a lot. So here's a perfect example. So here's, it's a very thick, uh, very thick lather, but it you could shave like this. But I think if you spend the time, add a few drops of water, reincorporate, you'll be very pleasantly surprised. Now, uh, Sabato Vecchio Veracino is moving towards making Oude Parfum in all of their scents. Currently, I think they have it in Kubebe or Puntia, and I think one other. I haven't, I haven't looked at the website recently. And Desert Vetiver. And their parfums are beautiful, and they're very well priced. Now, let that when we talk about price, let's talk about that. Does Sabato Vecchio Veracino command an elite price? Absolutely. Is it along the lines of an elite manufacturer? Absolutely. But I will argue, and you know, it may not be popular because, you know, like I said, your mileage may vary. The packaging of Sapa de Vicio Veracino is, is, in my opinion, among the best. I mean, where else can you get uh, a 3D relieved, beautiful aluminum bottle and then also get 
a, a 3D reliefed aluminum can. Now the cans are very thin aluminum. They will get dented if you're not careful with them. But part of the cost of what you're paying is that, that eliteness of the product. And that goes for all their stuff, brushes, razors, everything. So I've added water twice and the brush is very, very slick. And there's plenty of, in fact, it's falling off. So I would, I would venture to say those of you that are having trouble with it being as slick as you like it, uh, try it again. And the, you can smell the oud and the cedar almost uh, consistently uh, throughout this. Uh, it's light, but it's just wonderful. Okay. And I think by doing it this way, uh, you you get an idea of the slickness. Um, I have got very, very little pressure on my razor. And I wanted to use the vector for the first shave because of that reason, because the head is so thin uh, if I've ever had a, uh, a razor get draggy, this was it. And I, and as you know, I shave with a straight razor most of the time, and I never have any problem. So I would, uh, if I were you and you're having trouble with it, I would definitely revisit how you lather it, whether it be bowl lathering or not, it's the same kind of process. You still float that tablespoon. So as I said, instead of just re-lathering, I would definitely rehydrate your face. And it is super slick. I mean, really super slick. And that's only gonna lend to a better second pass as well. So you're adding water kind of twice. And the leather remains very slick and shiny and everything else. Still getting the oud and the cedar. You're still getting your top notes. You know, once again, the cedar, the tangerine, and the oud. The oud is very forward, but not in a cloying way. A lot of people that like ouds, you know, um, there's so many different types, but the true agar wood, you know, will smell... And, and it's just, you got to know this, it smells a little fecal, uh, a little barnyard type. Uh, and um, you could argue that it smells a little bit like an Indian market with all the smells that go in there or a Mexican market. Those of you that have been to the Mexican market on your border towns, because you've got the Serapis, you've got the, the marble of the chess sets, you've got the you know, the, 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 the leather goods. Um, almost like saddle leather. So that, you know, so that, that is very forward, but you get the brightness of the tangerine and the cedar. I think, I think that the, the cedar in the agar wood uh, work extremely well together. The cedar takes away some of the the barnyard uh, uh, type of oud, just in the same way that Tom Ford takes oud mineral and adds uh, a lot of the other scents to it to tone it down. Um, because there's two trains of thought when it comes to oud. Uh, the purist that want it to be pure and strong and in your face, and then you've got the rest of us that like it and enjoy it, but when the, when the, uh, you know, when people around you kind of turn up their nose, like, dude, did you wipe? Yeah, it's probably a little bit too much at that point. Now, the one thing that I notice on the third pass is that I'm starting to get some of the, the berry, meaning the uh, Icelandic light leaching. It's starting to kind of come out. And I think what that is, is 
the sense, you know, I've started to tone down over the three passes, but now that's beginning to add a sweet component to it. And that may be a little bit of the, Debas uh, the Damascene Rose, which is not a true rose scent, so don't let that scare you. Um, if you like Oud Mineral, I think you'll love this. This is probably one of their most unique scents. And what I also suggest, and this is an old perfumer's trick, is when you're smelling their items, and they do, uh, Sepatrucio Veracinta does have a sampler uh, on their aftershaves, not on their soaps, but on their aftershaves, because it is hard soaps. Um, make sure you have some coffee grounds stand, uh, handy. Because to pick out these notes, and I learned this when I, quite frankly, when I became a certified perfumer, um, you need to clear your palate. It's just like, you know, a nurse Dave will tell you, you know, when you're tasting wines, you need to clean the palate a little bit uh, to taste all the notes of the wine. Because wines are not great. I mean, you know, and that's the thing that people need to realize is when you're looking at scents, you know, whether it says vetiver or whether it says something else, you know, think of shave soaps, especially from an elite maker from Sapo de Chio Veracino, as, as a wine. You're going to be picking out notes, just like you do different different flavors and stuff in wines. It's the same thing, in my opinion. Um, Dave, uh, Nurse Dave calls this his Lux shave, because I'm sure he can appreciate the different uh, notes being a sommelier himself. And being a sommelier and being a perfumer... Is basically nomenclature and what I mean by that is as a sommelier you're using your taste buds as your olfactory or you know you're using your taste buds in your palate whereas with a perfumer you're using your olfactory and it's and the funny thing is if you go back where does it end up it ends up in your hard palate where does uh you know your taste buds and stuff like that you roll it around the back so it's a lot of the same the same stuff and uh so i would recommend you know really get to know it but don't get to know it on a linear level like for instance um i know kj had mentioned that for him and a lot of it's your water too i've got very hard water and traditionally hard water is not slick water but i just rinsed after the third pass and i could very easily do cleanup i mean is it as slick post shave as some others no but it's plenty slick enough. So that's it for that. So as I said, I will post the uh, the notes uh, in uh, the bottom of this video um, on YouTube in the in the description section. Um, and if you have any questions, please uh, let me know in the uh, in the forum. Just wonderful face feel. A um, little bit sticky, but that's because of the emollients that are in it. Now, as far as the aftershave is concerned, and I also will be using uh, Italian powder this whole time, and this will all be uh, from uh, Boratalco. Um, I'm hoping that SV comes out with some talcs, Marco Alessand uh, Alessandro, talcs. And I'm also hoping that 70th anniversary is the next EDP, for what it's worth. So, the aftershave on the Tundra Artica is... It's not a, 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 a free-flowing alcohol aftershave, uh, nor is it a balm, nor is it a serum. It's kind of a hybrid of all three. Uh, always make sure, because it is a natural product, shake up uh, the SV. Uh, and also, now, these older bottles have a little reducer that you just pour out. The newer ones have a large mouth reducer. So use your thumb, because you will have a whole bunch of stuff, and you won't need half of it. Uh, with the Tundra Arctica, two to three drops. So that's it. In fact, that's probably a little bit much. Rub it in your hands, and you'll feel it. It's almost gel-like, but the the uh, skin properties are amazing. And you don't want to if you're in a if you're in a uh, a warm climate, don't use too much because it will get cloying after a while. But it's very light. Um, but it's just enough. And uh, you're not going to offend anybody with this at all. Um, 
and it just it makes your face feel wonderful and you smell once again as soon as you put it on the first thing you're hit with is the oud the tangerine and the uh and the citrus the tangerine or the yeah the oud the cedar rather i should say uh you do have kind of a an alcohol uh smell that uh, comes into play and then it starts to dry down and as this dries down and this will last this initial hit will last probably 15 20 minutes and then over time it'll become a little bit more creamy but you'll always have a little bit of the, of the oud there but your face just feels just tremendous and like i said uh they do not have the edp in this yet so i will only use the edps on the uh sapodificio veracino if i have one uh, because i want to test well, i already know but for purposes of this tour um I'm just going to use the aftershave. And what I use a lot of times is I'll take, because this stuff is so thick, I'll take a couple of dots, uh, just a dot of the Tundra Article and place it in my heat parts. And uh, it will, uh, okay, that sounded sick, heat parts, heat spots. And uh, and uh, use that almost like an Udo Parfum. So, and it works, it actually works pretty well. Okay, folks, that's it. Our day one of our tour of Sapon Vecchio Veracino is complete. Uh, the first one was Tundra Arctica. Uh, I do recommend getting it um, if you haven't, because I know some people are on the fence about it. Uh, we're not going to do this in any specific order. Uh, tomorrow, it looks like, um, just by virtue of what I've got over here, is probably going to be uh, Murto de Sardegna, uh, which is a very nice peppery uh, citrus. And this is where we're starting to get into where things start smelling a lot the same, uh, but we'll go through those details as well. Uh, once again, I am so proud that Sapato Vecchio, Veracino, Marco, and uh, Alessandro are now uh, retail artisans to join our other fantastic retail artisans. We're very happy to have you. And also, I cannot thank you enough for the 21 or 22 brushes in 24 hours, and we still got two weeks to go on this thing. So jump in on that uh, brush deal, uh, and uh, please interact with uh, with the guys from Sapato Vecchio Veracino. Now understand they are in Italy, so there is going to be a time lag. If we're posting, it may be you know eight nine hours before they get back to you. So please be patient on that. But Marco is. Uh, being very proactive in everything. So once again, thank you for being members of the shavingcadre.com. And uh, don't forget to check out the Sapato Vecchio Veracino uh, aficionados group over on uh, Facebook. And then make sure that you check out their online store as well. You can check us out at www.theshavingcadre.com. Thank you once again, and we'll see you tomorrow for the next step in the journey of Sapato Vecchio Veracino. Have a great day.